Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, Argentina today, uh, five Argentinian wines, two uh, Bernardas, and then three Malbecs. Let's just dig in, see where we get to. First one is uh, Mairena uh, Bonada 2010. All of these say uh, Mendoza on, um, and uh, some of them are a bit more specific into as to which part of uh, Mendoza they're from. So when we get to those, I will tell you. Sweet, rich berry. Um, there's um, a slight chocolatey note uh, as well from, uh, I think it's from oak, that's coming through. Um, and sometimes Bonada can be a bit savoury and, um, and herby. I don't get too much of that character coming through here but it smells like it's going to be a nice fleshy wine. And there is a bit of freshness there, uh, a little bit of bite, um, black currant, blackberries, some savoury uh, notes. Uh, it's the lowest alcohol of these, that's 13%, I think they go up to about 14.5%. Uh, uh, but I, I, if I have a problem with it, it's, I, it's what I call that slightly clunky oak. Um, they, it feels like they've, they've um, a chocolate wafer biscuit oak. Feels like I, I, I would have much preferred it if they'd put it in older oak for a bit longer uh, to round it out because the fruit's still quite boisterous and um, ju juicy and, and friendly and vigorous. But um, yeah, maybe just a bit too juvenile. Nice, but um, and it may just be that it needs a little bit of time in bottle to uh, uh, to calm down. But uh, maybe they could have done that in the cellar and hey, but I do like it. Uh, next one, um, a year older, Trapiche's Brockel Bonada 2009, and again, no specification beyond uh, Mendoza as to its origins. And now this is a little bit more earthy and savoury. Um, if um, if the first one is, is new world, this is this is more old world. This, this feel, I mean, Trapiche is one of uh, uh, the long established uh, producers. Uh, part of the is it Peñaflor Group, and um, uh, tracing its its history back um, uh, quite a few generations. Uh, and it feels, yeah, that there are some there are some wineries that where they uh, uh, they're still uh, less than five vintages under their belt. To be honest, I mean the the other four wines in this in this uh, range, uh, I think I've heard of Chieto before, but uh, the others are all new to me. Uh, here, um, there is a bit of uh, a, a bit more uh, relaxed character to the wine, and uh, rather than the boisterous, uh, hold me back, hold me back, uh, that was there in the first one. Smells good, uh, but uh, smells different. And here the oak is making its um, presence felt in a slightly different way. Um, I, 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 Rioja Bernarda, if you want to call it that way. Uh, there's more of a, um, a sweet vanilla character. Here it was that chocolate wafer biscuit. Here it's the sweet vanilla. I, th I think in both, in both instances, I would have liked a little bit more, less of the oak influence uh, and more larger, older barrels. So you get the softening, the, uh, softening effect without the um, impact of the flavour. Here... It's higher in alcohol. I think uh, this is 14 compared with 13 on the first one. Um, but uh, both both of them have got uh, have got a nice bright freshness about it um, about them. Uh, and um, I mean, if you're if you're looking at Argentina, don't just stop on Malbec. Bonada is, is a grape that really uh, deserves exploration. Uh, both of those two, I very happily uh, polish off a second glass and maybe even a third. Uh, let's see whether I can say the same for the Malbecs. Um, so we have got a 2011 and two 2010s. Uh, the 2011 is Perpetuum uh, Premium Malbec 2011 uh, from the Jimenez Ri family. Uh, and uh, origin here, 60% Uco Valley, 40% uh, Maipu. Not to be confused with Maipu in uh, Chile. Well, there's almost a minty character here, slightly bandagey. I'm just wondering whether it's ever so slightly bretty. And, uh, but then the fruit, uh, yes, it's got almost like a Coca-Cola character. Um, bright red berries, a dark berry, dark fruit as well. Uh, but uh, And it smells quite fresh. It, it, it's young. It doesn't feel like it's, it's over-ripened or over-oaked or anything like that. But let's taste it. Yeah, that minty, savoury, um, herby character is there. Maybe a little bit too prominent for me. Uh, I'll be interested to see how this how, how this ages, um, or well, how it, what what happens over the next few hours as it uh, uh, as it opens up in the uh, uh, in the bottle. Uh, for me at the moment, uh, I would almost like a little bit more of the Malbec uh, violet freshness. It does it, it, it it's not it's not not a heavy wine by any means, but I don't get much of that um, uh, the Malbec uh, purity that that, that 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 you get in in, in the best examples. It's okay. I, I'm going to move on. Uh, next one, wine number four, is uh, Hacienda uh, del Plato uh, Zagal Malbec. 
uh, and uh, not sure of uh, origin uh, uh, again apart from it being Mendoza. Now it's not quite as intense in colour as the previous ones. It feels uh, and it smells uh, as if it's not trying to be anything too big or too uh, not trying to impress you. But in the process of not trying to impress, uh, it comes across as being quite light, fresh, and um, uh, and juicily gluggable. Uh, so there's a slightly medicinal help, uh, hint to this uh, plummy uh, dark berry fruit, um, but um, it smells like you want to have a swig of it. Well. I quite like that. Um, me, it's not as ambitious a wine, I don't think, as the one before. I'm not sure of the price of uh, uh, the comparative price, but uh, the slightly smaller bottle should have probably led me to believe that uh, it wasn't going to, um, uh, yeah, be trying to impress you maybe as, as much as the one before. But in trying not to impress, it actually comes across as quite a nice, uh, juicy, uh, friendly wine. Uh, there is some licorice there. There's some giving. Uh, so it, it feels like it's it, there's, there's a, 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 some warmth and. Uh, uh, richness and uh, alcohol bite about it, 14% on the first one, 14.5% here. Um, but um, certainly not a wine that I'd want to uh, to, uh, to keep for any length of time. But um, it does its job pretty well. Uh, and um, yeah, I actually prefer it to the one before. Let's see how I get on with the final one, which is Quieto uh, Malbec 2010. Uh, origin Mendoza uh, from three distinct Mendoza terroir. They bring us complexity, delicacy and delight, uh, but they don't tell you what they are. Let's have a go. Deeper in colour, deeper in aroma, uh, but uh, there's still some freshness about that aroma. There's the, there's the plums, the berries, uh, a little bit of the black currant, uh, maybe even something a little bit more exotic, maybe even something a little like passion fruit in there. Uh, a slight, uh, some of the floral character that maybe I've missed in the previous two. Um, and um, yeah, it smells like it's going to be uh, concentrated but not trying too hard. And that floral, spicy character carries on into into the wine. It's like there's this um, uh, middle bit of berries and plums, and lacing through it are things like the, yeah, the floral notes, the spicy notes. There is again that licorice note of heat, 14.5% alcohol. Not a shy fawn of a wine, uh, but. Um, but yes, it's not it's not over the top. Uh, it's not the one of those sweet, ripe, almost porty styles that uh, some people uh, seem to think uh, what wine should taste like. It's uh, this is a wine that you could actually drink, providing you had a large piece of uh, bife de chorizo, as they as they uh, as they like it in uh, in in Argentina. Uh, probably my favourite of the of the uh, of the lineup. Although um, I mean. I mean, I, I, Argentina, I have a love-hate relationship with Argentina. I, I almost like the wines from 10 years ago more than I like some of them now. Uh, they seem to have um, gone a, a, a bit too bloated. And I think they've stopped probably about three years ago doing the, doing the really bloated styles, but their legacy uh, lingers on. And uh, there are still wines that uh, get fabulous scores from certain critics that you taste and you think, this is like drinking soup. Um, here, I, I, I want freshness, I want bite in a wine, I want some acidity and uh, I want a live fruit rather than something that's gone raisiny. And uh, the best ones of these, I give it. And uh, I think I'm going to go and try and find a steak or two to, uh, to polish off with that. Uh, and I think I'll see you soon.